I've never in my life experienced so many people who like to blast their music at full volume until I moved into this apartment and hear people going by every day, like blasting whatever type of music they're in the mood to show the whole neighborhood. I don't get it. What's up guys, it's Kelly and today I'm doing a Nail Polish 101 video! I know it's been like a weirdly long time since I have done a Nail Polish 101 video. I'm not done with this series. I still have a ton more videos that I want to teach you guys. If you guys are new to my channel or if you haven't watched my Nail Polish 101 series, basically it's just a series of videos that are just like on the very nail polish basics or nail art basics or nail care basics. Things that people don't even think to teach and just assume everybody knows, but a lot of people just don't know them. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to teach you guys. I just spit a little bit. I hope it's okay. Anyway, today's video is going to be on how to paint your dominant hand. I feel like this is going to be like the least catchy title ever and nobody's going to get what I mean. Let me give you guys a little example. You're a righty and you're painting your left hand with your right hand and it's all smooth sailing. And then you go and you take your left hand and you got to paint your right hand and suddenly it's disastrous and terrible. So today I'm going to teach you how to paint your dominant hand with your non-dominant hand. But I actually just filmed this and it went horribly wrong because because I kept saying dominant, non-dominant, dominant, non-dominant, non it sounds crazy. So, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to refer to your dominant hand as your good hand and your non-dominant hand as your bad hand. Now, we're not being elitist here. I think all hands are equal, except that there really is one hand that is a good hand and the other hand is just not as good at doing stuff. And I don't know why. And I also don't know why I'm filming so late at night and there's still so much traffic noises and sirens and craziness. And I'm so sorry for that. I hope you guys can't hear it. It sounds like it's very distant, but I feel like my microphone just likes to pick it up just to annoy me. So that's going on right now too. But anyway, let's just get started. So first I'm going to talk to you guys about just general painting tips and then I have a few little tips at the end that I'm going to talk about how to do nail art with. So let's just start with the general tips. All right, tip number one is paint your good hand first. So when you do your nails, obviously it feels like you should be doing your bad hand first using your good hand because it's just easier. But then you get at a double disadvantage because you have a wet hand and you're painting with your bad hand and it just makes it twice as hard. So my advice is to paint your good hand first because you're at less of a disadvantage when you're going on to the other hand. Now, I will tell you guys, to be honest, I don't follow this advice at all. I paint my bad hand first and then I let my nails completely dry and then I paint my good hand. I know that seems like crazy and probably backwards and you guys are probably like, wow, you have a lot of time on your hands. And I don't, I only paint my nails when I have enough time, but it takes me twice as long to paint my nails. The reason I do this, it's not a good reason at all. I'm just super paranoid and I'm always like, well, what if I need a free hand for this or that or go to the bathroom or whatever. So I'm like super paranoid. So I always just want to have at least one dry hand. But yeah, don't advise doing that. I would advise painting your good hand first, painting your bad hand, then you can just be done with it. You know what I mean? Tip number two is steady your hand on a table. In my experience, I have seen a lot of people when they paint their nails, they'll either do it like this or they'll do it like this. That's going to be a lot harder when you're using your bad hand to paint your nails because your hand gets like, I don't know, shaky. It's just not as easy. It's not as precise. So what you want to do is you want to balance your hand on the table and then just try to move your hand as little as possible so that you can just get the polish on without shaking. Here's my imaginary table, right? Here's my hand. Here's my other hand. Steadily balance on the table and then we're just moving as little as possible. That's it. So easy. It's not that easy, but you know what? It's easier. And I honestly advise doing that for both hands. I advise doing that for nail art. I think it's just a lot easier when you're on a steady surface and you're just moving basically these two fingers. It's a lot easier. That's how I paint my nails all the time. All right, and then tip number three is do as few brush strokes as possible. So the more brush strokes you do, obviously, the more chances of messing up. So I like to use those really thick wide brushes like OPI has them, Sally Hansen has them. Brands like that are just easier to use because for my nails specifically. I usually just have to go down one swipe down the middle and then one swipe on either side and then I'm done. When I use like really thin brushes like uh, China Glaze is one of them, I think it's a lot harder to paint my good hand with my bad hand. There's a lot more strokes and it just gets a lot more difficult. But I know that there are some people who prefer it. So either way, using as few brush strokes as possible is going to be the way to go. Tip number four is try to be as good with the painting as possible. And I know that seems like you're probably just like, well, duh. But for me, honestly, especially when I do my bad hand with my good hand, I don't even care. I'm just like, we're just going, we're just having a good time. And then I'll do cleanup after with a little acetone and a cleanup brush. And if you guys haven't seen how I do that, I've got a video also in my nail polish 101 playlist, which I'll link up here on how to clean up your manicure. And I usually rely on that a lot. But when I'm doing my good hand with my bad hand, I 
I think it's a lot easier to do it right the first time than it is to like go back and fix those mistakes. It's so much harder to fix mistakes on your good hand than it is to do on your bad hand with your good hand. So definitely do that and also just work slowly. If you're painting your nails in the right environment, if there's no fan or anything crazy going on, then your polish isn't going to dry immediately so you can work a little bit slower on your bad hand or on your good hand. <sighs> I'm already confusing myself with it. This is terrible. Let's just move on. You guys get the gist of it. Let's talk about nail art. Tip number one for nail art or is this tip number five? Tip number one or five. If you feel like you can't do your nail art with your bad hand, try to create your own decal and I'm going to tell you how to do that right now. I have these nifty mats. I have this one from Bundle Monster. It's a silicone mat. Basically what I do is I will draw my design on this silicone mat. I'll let it dry and then I'll just like peel it off and stick it onto my nail and it's like creating your own decal. That's actually a tip that I would use for pretty much both hands because if you have a hard time painting nail art on your nails, painting it like on another separate entity is a lot easier and then letting that dry and peeling it up and you also get a lot more consistency with something like this. I was gonna show you guys an example in this video but I actually thought it might be cooler to just do a whole video on how to make your own decal so if you guys are interested I'll probably throw a poll up right here and you guys can let me know if you're interested in that video but I think that would be really cool to do. So if you don't want to invest in one of these mats they're not expensive I'm gonna link them in the description below but if you don't want to invest in them I've also heard those like Ziploc freezer bags are good too because they're a nice thick plastic. I haven't used them before and the reason I like the silicone mats is because they are reusable and they're very durable. I can clean this off with pure acetone when I'm done with it. You can see mine has splotches all over it right now because I use it all the time but yeah once you're done using it you can just clean it off with acetone and you can reuse it over and over again whereas you pretty much can't do that with a plastic bag. You can also paint like a big surface area and then let it dry and peel it off and you basically just have like a lot of material that you can cut out and create your own decals with that way instead of like painting something freehand like if you wanted triangles on your nails for example it's really hard to paint consistent triangles you can just cut those out of a piece of dried polish that you painted on here so that's another thing I can do in the video if you guys are interested in a video on how to create your own decals. Tip number six or two depending on how you decide to view this video. Now I forgot what the tip is. Tip number six is kind of a weird one, but this is something that I do for really simple designs, which is you can move your good hand and not move your bad hand, but hold the brush out and sort of use that to create the design. So that's really hard to explain. I'm gonna show you guys a little visual example, but basically like for example, if you're doing stripes, just hold the brush out and don't move and then you can move your good hand and you can sort of use that to create stripes. Easy to do with straight lines or to do with something like a heart. Anything like that is easier to do when you move your good hand instead of trying to navigate with your bad hand. Last but not least, tip number seven or three is to use decals or stamps or stickers. The reason for that is because if you can do it on one hand, you can do it on the other. They're pretty easy to use. I know not everybody likes to use them, but it is a pretty good way to get consistent nail art on all of your nails. Like if you wanted to do chevrons or something, you could just get chevron stickers and you can paint those onto your nails and just, it's literally just about peeling it off and cleaning it up nicely. I find that striping tape is really easy to use on both hands. Oh, I didn't realize there was holes in the shirt. I just stuck my hand in my armpit. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you like my Nail Polish 101 series. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell because for whatever reason, subscribing is just not enough anymore. You also have to get notified, which for some reason YouTube doesn't do that when you're subscribed, which is weird, but whatever. Anyway, leave me a comment if you have any specific Nail Polish 101 videos that you want to see. Like I said, I have a ton of ideas, so these will be coming out fairly soon. That's it for this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! All right, are you guys ready for today's fun fact? Because it is kind of crazy and I'm about to share an embarrassing fact with you guys. Once you know it, you're not going to be able to unknow it. Okay? Are you ready for it? Are you ready? My left hand, which is my dominant hand, my nails are round and they're square on my right hand which is the hand that you always see. And the reason for that, I actually only did that in the last year and nobody's noticed, but now you guys are gonna notice all the time. So the reason that I do that is because it just got so hard to manage having square nails on my dominant hand. Like I wear contacts and I take them out with my nails instead of my fingers, which I know you're not supposed to do, but I do it and I was like always scratching my eyes. Anytime I was like scratching my leg or something with my square nails on my dominant hand, I would like cut myself because they're so sharp in the corners. You know what I mean? Like 
I love having square nails and I love the way that they look, but they're a little bit inconvenient in terms of like hurting yourself because they hurt. If you scratch yourself, you're gonna draw a little blood possibly. That's why I have round nails on this hand. Now you guys will forever know what my deep dark secret. My voice just cracked a little bit, I guess because I'm nervous about it. I hope you still love me and that's it. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.